assalamu alaikum to all my students who are studying drama and the classical age of drama till the renaissance this is our first lecture which is being recorded online and as well as available in the online classes and uh, since the drama theater and uh, play uh, has always been an integral part of uh, our literature and english literature particularly in the west as well so before we discuss any other drama or any particular play we need to get into the detail of what drama looked like in the past how it started how it grew and how it got developed the face we have and now we have uh, many sub genres of drama so uh, i wouldn't take more time this is arshan siddiqui your teacher and for bs english students and for masters students this lecture has been recorded and available as well as online okay so drama its origin growth and development what do we need to know drama the word drama is derived from the greek word drain which means to do perform akin to greek drainian drainian means to be ready to do it technically it means deed action on stage so by the definition you can learn that the drama itself is basically um, not only to be read but also about action and performance so you'll find a lot of performance things uh, in a drama and it is not only helped by the words the diction the register that we use rather it is more helped by performances actions visual sound effects so everything is involved here so uh, let's move on we have the next next slide uh definition of the drama drama is an imitation of life in which dialogues and acting are in full consonance with the real life where acting and performance occupy the first place uh and uh, the dance and dialogue uh, occupy the second place so you can find that uh, you can find that that how what is the first place of the drama the performance and the acting and what is the second place for the drama is uh, obviously dialogues dance so you know that in earlier times the drama also involved music so there is a touch of music as well so you will always find uh, you know uh, music chorus and background voice background uh, info background sounds uh, they are also known as an urdu sauti asrat so that affects drama drama is a branch of fine arts so it's it's it was first the fine arts then it was related to literary or liberal arts and now the performing arts as well according to some scholars drama is a literary miracle which is written for the stage dialogues and speeches are in form of poems sentiments feelings are expressed by the body and tongue so what happens that even the early drama uh, you can find the earlier drama that's also in poetic form so poetry is considered to be the oldest genre of drama uh, oldest genre of english literature same goes to drama which is known as the second oldest genre of drama so let's have a look at what this definition is i would like you to you know take a moment to read this definition i will pause after every you know uh, on every slide so that you can take a good look at and close look at now we have the second slide the third slide functions of drama so if you can find out that drama is said to have originated from rituals means it has cultural background and more related to performances than you know the artistic or literary thought but is it has a lot to do with the way we you know perform things in our culture it presents a story realistically through the actors to the audience drama is therefore used to entertain inform educate so the 
the core purpose of the drama was entertainment and then it was for the information for to spread information widely among masses and finally you know the most modern format of the drama is to educate people about many things and ongoing campaigns uh, political scenarios awareness programs for instance most campaign against aids drug abuse child abuse so on are presented in the form of drama so you can have a look at this slide as well Okay, now let's move on. Now you can see this, these photos. The, the drama is being performed. So you can see that in the modern times, you don't need a stage or a formal theater. So even one side, you can have the performance on the theater and the other side, you can see that the drama is also performed in on the road. And uh, we can also find the, the mini form of drama in shape of role plays in our classes or in reenactment. Now, uh, even the all age groups are performing. Here we have kids, here we have grown up kids or growing kids, hand washing awareness. And you can see the visual support, the action, the activity and dialogues as well. Now, the most important thing, there is a, there has always been a controversy that where, whether the West takes pride in creating drama or what, and yes, it is commonly believed that the art of the drama is Western form of literature and it has been originated from Greeks. But in reality, it is totally opposite to as the Encyclopedia of Americana has rejected this theory. And it's, it traces its origin Egypt as far as go back 3200 before Christ, almost uh, 5300 years ago. So you can see that uh, the drama grew up or was born in Egypt, but grew up in Athens and uh, the other parts of Greek. However, we do not have survival of drama from Egyptians, but we can trace it from the pyramids that we have received. Second, uh, next slide. Some modern researches indicate that some knowledge of the drama may have come from Egypt. They're not sure about it. Where it is known of Egyptians, drama was a famous Abydus and Orissus passion play. Orisus being the name of the god whose history is celebrated. I told you that it, it has a lot to do with the rituals. So rites and rituals were performed to sacrifice and to tribute, to you know, pay homage to gods. So the drama was also a kind of homage to uh, that was to be paid to the god. The pyramid text of which at least 55 exist, the coronation festival, for a coronation, uh, a ceremony in which uh, kings are crowned or the queens are crowned, several of which survive in famous. And then a lot of marriages also happen, take place, have seats, coronation jubilees, physical evidence of which still exist, great number of passion plays. So there used to be passion plays and the, uh, at least three, and at least one medical uh, medicinal play recognized by Egyptology. So they were also teaching a uh, healing process through drama. The Abydus Passion Play in, in carved on a, on a stone plate. You can also find uh, these holographs on the screen. Now, continue with the origin of drama. Scholars are divided on origin of drama. Some trace the origin to the Greece, but others insist that drama is its definite form pattern evolved from Egypt. However, the account of tracing of the drama origin is more plausible the evolution is clearer and well documented. So you don't have to worry about where it has started. What we need to be appreciating is how it is started and how it developed. It, it like it did not die off. Western theater. So Western theater means Greek theaters. Obviously the, the center of West knowledge and uh, the, the center of the Western, you know, par, uh, sort of uh, uh, amazingly, you know, adequate or advanced theologies 
education was athens even the drama started even before the great scholars such as uh, aristotle plato and socrates the origin of the western of drama can be traced to celebratory music of 6th century before common era or christ attica the greek origin centered on athens so it started in athens although accounts of the period are inadequate so it's not confirmed it appears that the poet thapis developed a new musical form in which he impersonated the single character and engaged the chorus of singer dancers and dialogues so you can see that uh, and you can uh, guess from these words that uh, the uh, the poet who turned his poetry into performance and the performance came to be known as drama as the first composer of the soloist uh, in the new form which came to be known as a tragedy thespis thespis uh, or you can pronounce it as thepis so there are three different pronunciation prevailing can be considered both first dramatist and the first actor so he is also the dramatist as he was an actor he was it was a great tragedy he performed uh it is started in all 6th before, century before common era before the jesus christ as well was a worship of the god dionysus uh, i told you that the drama was to pay tribute so the tribute to the dionysus who was a god of pleasure or god of wine uh people call it uh, had two sides of him good or bad comedy and tragedy so there were two sides comedic comic comedy and tragedy and these masks became the symbol of drama across the world and you can see through these marks and their faces one is happy and smiling the other is in pain so the pain refers to tragedy and the smile or the laughter refers to comedy which was earlier known as satire they were known as satire chorus group of chanters danced around an altar commemorator his death the song they sang was called god song or tragos the greek word for tragedy tragos or tragos so like even the death on the death of someone which was performed uh, an important person so they were lamenting in the sense of drama and performing and these masks traced from thalia and melpomene Mel, uh, melpomene mask okay here we go now the comes now comes the performance greek drama these performances evolved into dramatic contest you know in greek things became so popular and if they are for education and for the masses they were supposed to be so popular and they got so popular that it lasted for 5 to 6 days the last 3 days four plays were performed three tragedies the trilogy which was known as the the even written by one playwright or two playwrights or three playwrights they were performed but they must be here must must have been tragedies and then there was a they were followed by a comedy which was earlier known as satire and you can see the spelling of satire oh. this is the first actor won the first competition by stepping out from the chorus and engaging in dialogues so you can see that first it was a poetry and the performance and the chorus involved with the music and then Thespis, uh, you know, he somehow experimented and in, uh, and you know invented dialogues in his drama. Drama. They were sir, just music and poetry. Now there are dialogues. So here we go. Thespian, the name given to the actor ever since. So now the actors were known as in Greek language Thespians. So his speaking of dialogue. you know added one element of drama that is character held in open uh, uh, on a hill side surroundings uh, a circular area called the orchestra wooden seats were added and then stones some theaters seated more than 170 they could occupy more than 70000 people and since they were performed in the middle so the the voice the vocal can be echoed and can be listened to farther than the normal sound. they used to use certain instruments that can you know uh, enhance the voice of vocal the role of the chorus explain the situation the uh, they were uh, characters is speaking of dialogues 
Number one. Number two, the character's performing act, the music, the sound, the uh, prologue to the drama in written form or, or in oral tradition. But there was also the important part of the chorus, a, a bunch of people singing together and what their purpose was. Explain the situation, bring the audience up to date, make a commentary on the action, engage in a dialogue with the actors. So actually, if you know the word backgrounding and foregrounding, so these two things are important. So they were there. Uh, eventually the role diminished as an actor roles expanded. The chorus is still used in increased realism of the scenes to engage in the scenes in which the main characters. Even sometimes I can tell you that the characters were the mirror, mirror of the, the actor or the conscience of the actors. And some supernatural resources were also used as uh, the, the voice of supernatural elements through chorus. You can see that the authors of the Greek drama. These are the two famous one. Aeschylus expanded number of actors and reduced the size of chorus. Only surviving trilogies or Estria. So you can find it in translation as well. He is the one who expanded the role of actors and dialogues and performance. Followed by Sophocles, one of the greatest dramatists of all time and ranked with Shakespeare as one of the best playwrights of all time. And his tragedy is still taught and read and discussed and performed in all performing fine liberal and language arts uh, centers. Because without his studying his tragedy, you can never reach the height of tragedies. Greg with Shakespeare, one of the best playwrights of all time, redefined, refined plot structure, created unified works, an author of Oedipus Rex or Oedipus Rex, Oedipus Rex, some people call it an Antigone, the, the following play of the Oedipus Rex. Euripides, Euripides was very famous uh, because he emphasized on human relationship and his drama was different from uh, just on not merely a comedy or not merely a tragedy, but he worked on the human relationship and their emotions. So author of the, the Trojan Women and Media, the Trojan, uh, he particularly portrayed Trojans, Trojaners that time. Then Astrophan was the author of Greek comedy. He was the, one of the greatest Greek tra tragedy, sorry, comedy author considered nothing sacred. He was the man who was satirist and sort of secular as well. So you can see that lack of sacred attitude grows into secularism. Skilled satirist and observer of humanity, author of the, the frogs, the clouds and Lysanthrata. Finally, the Menander was a Greek dramatist. You can even hear Menander from uh, Dryden as well. Dryden even mentioned him in his books. Uh, as, a, uh, as a critical work. It was a Greek dramatist and based on representative of Athenian's new comedy. So the new com comedy was introduced. He wrote almost 108 comedy and took prize in Lin uh, Linnea Festival eight times. He was the one who basically added more elements to comedy and that was they, they then came to be called as new com comedy. After Greek, we have drama of Romans because the Greek empire is integrated. And now we have the drama, which is by Roman empires or approved by Roman empires. So as I have already mentioned in the history, the historical part of uh, development of literature through Western Westerners, you can find that there are two things that you must be considering. Number one, you need to have two sort uh, dual understanding. One is the historical development, the other is religious development. In the historical development, obviously, you know, the history was shaping, geography was changing, but in political and regional religious development, there were things happening in Europe and Europe was busy at that time. Disintegration of Greek empire led to many unrest in Europe and the momentum shifted from Athens to Rome. And then came the great Roman Empire. 
and these Roman empires uh, then divided into two you know, empires, the pre-Christian Roman Empire and post-Christian Roman Empire. So even the Christ Christianity impacted a lot. Most were just copies of Greek drama. They were the follower of Greek. Uh, Greek. Andronicus, the first Roman playwright of an author from a Greek colony. The first Roman tragedy was translated from the Greek play Roman theater. Then amphitheaters, large, circular, they, the Greeks were the one who basically constructed arenas. And the arenas were not actually uh, firstly designed for dramas in their performance. They were actually designed for, for uh, they were actually designed for uh, gladiators, the slave fights, and uh, uh, sort of, you know, uh, horse racing, the circular racing, and the, they were brutal fights. But however, somehow the kings also allowed the dramas to be performed. And uh, the first Roman tragedy was the translation from the Greek Roman play theater. Then amphitheaters, large circulars, arena surrounded by tiers of seat. So they were huge. Where the Greeks dramatists were writing for festivals and presentations, the the caduce uh, that that were would that would ensue. The Roman theater were commercial, and the dramatists wrote for money and for patronage. Plutus and Terence adapted Greek originals, so they were like uh, dramatists wanted to get close to kings, and they were being paid for it. It is known that they used to, they used the plays of Menander. I told you that Menander has a greater a greater influence on upcoming dramatists till the Dryden. Dryden even mentioned in his books about that. It, so Menander was used, and this is amphitheater. You can see how people see the arrangement is, the stages, and even Shakespeare mentioned these sort sort of stage. Hamlet is one of the examples. Medieval. Yes. So in the medieval drama, the battle between Christian religions, Catholicism and pagan religions, trying to reform the world. Now that's after the Roman empires, you can find that uh, the Romans uh, had more than five or six great play playwrights they were writing, but Terence uh, were the ones uh, who became popular and polluters. There were other dramatists as well. Uh, then comes the medieval drama. The medieval drama is basically a discussion between uh, religious and non-religious or pagan religions. The play was not approved by the church, was considered as blasphemous, as a reform. Uh, so even the church was in more control of these activities. The church thought that they would use these plays to teach Bible. Their main purpose was to teach Bible and preach people. However, the secular plays or the plays by different other religions were not as approved approving as they should have been. Then we have the liturgical drama, the question answer song performed by monks and the Easter's and, and they used to, even they were for education. Saint plays based on legends of the saints and their greatness, like the story of the different saints and sages. Mystery plays based in Bible uh, history, biblical history, passion plays address the last week of the Christ's life, particularly when the Christ was crucified. Morality plays taught difference between right and wrong. So you will find uh, the complete discussion on mystery plays, morality plays, or moral plays, what we call it. And uh, how the medieval drama was performed. Uh, the performed or a played form called mansions. Three mansions represented heaven, hell, and the sea of Galilee. So uh, even there outside the church, they used to play, create different mansions and the mansions were performed because they, they did not have particular stages. So heaven, hell, and sea of the Galilee was, was painted and they were set in a way there. Medieval craft girls look like the presentation of the drama, pagan wagons, stages on the wheel, divided into two levels, upper, lower stage, and dressing area. So medievals continued their experimentation in drama and finally the stages being constructed or erected and these stages had three parts, upper stage, lower stage, and the dressing area where the uh, actors, directors, and performers, and writers used to sit. You can see that medieval drama, uh, like right under the stage, 
behind the stage there was a dressing area foyer and everything you take a look good look at this picture and you will find the settings Okay, now medieval drama continues. Uh, for folk drama, secular drama, first time non religious drama. These drama was purely for the entertainment and for uh, people awareness about uh, other things as well. However, the drama it was one of the darkest ages of Europeans, and church was in great power, and the kings were even moved by churches. So what happens that? The church believed in two things. They used to make people believe in two things. Number one, they need to learn Latin, no other languages. The second is they people as Bible was sacrificed. Uh, since the the Jesus Christ has sacrificed his life for the people, so it's only order of the God that they should be studying or reading Bible, nothing else. And even they didn't believe in science and other faculty. So uh, church stopped people from doing other activities and these non-religious dramas were highly discouraged by the church. Uh, however, they took place uh, around the planting and harvest time and presented outdoors. Most of the time church did not like it. Most pagan religions gave thanks to, to an earth goddess, hence celebration around the planting and harvest. So you can see that the pagans were also playing their part in creating drama because they wanted to, to give tribute to their gods. So they did it through uh, the drama. However, the rebellion drama started and one of the most rebellion drama was written at that time, Robin Hood. Uh, Robin Hood was not a complete drama. It was the part of, you know, a character who is performing something for the favor of poor people and uh, looting rich ones. Okay. So, uh, I will Continue. I will end this lecture with the medieval drama because uh, the medieval till medieval drama, we have a lot of things to discuss such as morality plays and my, uh, moral plays. So why drama got popular in Western Europe and uh, in the West of the Europe? Why not in other parts? Uh, Christianity has a lot to do with this because uh, these uh, morality plays, mystery plays, and uh, Miracle plays as well. They were also miracle plays which you will find in uh, Chaucerian age or in the Middle English. So these dramas have contributed a lot. Uh, since a lot of people were not educated, they did not have formal education. They were unable to. There was there was a lack of literacy. So these drama also help people understand what the message of God through Bible and the other parts of the Bible were and how the prophet led their life. The prophet were either called the saints or they were known as the prophets of the history, uh, out of which few dramas became so popular from Egypt and from uh, eastern part, uh, western part of Europe, such as the story of Joseph and Zulekha, Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam and Hazrat Zulekha, and the story of Noah, Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, and uh, the story of uh, David and the story of Solomon, so these dramas started being performed by uh, church and church used to give approval to these dramas so that, you know, people could read. And then, you know, the passion plays were the most important ones during that time. They were in Latin, usually in Latin, no Greek language was used. And these passion play uh, used to, to pay homage to uh, Jesus Christ. Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, uh, they were for Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. So these plays were there for, and they were represented by church. So you can see that how religion also uh, utilized drama for education of the people, apart from the controversy that they did not allow, allow others like secularist or the other pagan religions to perform them. Church is still had a great control on this. 
So censor board was also there. So the church was the censor board. So they, they never allowed anything going against their beliefs, their preaching, or even they thought that anything they go against go, went against them. which was act of of course against bible as well so mystery plays were actually bible biblical history bible stories morality plays were to teach between right and wrong and which many characters were performing the satan roles the other performing saint roles jesus versus satan the cross versus satan catholic church uh, was uh, designing these kinds of dramas and uh, obviously you know, inspiring people into this. So for the last, uh, before I add my topic, let me, you know, have a quick review of, visual review of what we have studied so far today. It's, it started with the drama definition. The word drama, Danian Greek word. However, the definition of the drama continued to be explained by performance more performance, music, chorus, characters, dialogues, poetry, functions were the drama, three functions you must remember, entertain, form, and educate. So this is how the modern drama look like and there are many other formats, thousands of formats. So in schools, in, uh, in the class, outside the class can be performed. Drama has also uh, played an important role in developing English language which we will discuss further in other lectures. Okay, there was a conflict between Egyptian origin of the drama or the Western origin or Greek origin of the drama. This is how the evidence traced back 3,500 before common era, almost 5,000 years ago. The Western theater, obviously the, known as Greek theater, which was not long ago, 600 before common era. So around 2700 years ago. Okay. The oldest things, you know, which you can visual. These were the author, you must remember Sophocles because his work you are going to read. And uh, after Greek Roman Empire, the growth of Roman Empire, the time of the Roman Empire establishment, and that also led Romans to perform plays by Greek. But for a long time, because of the wars, these plays were stopped. In the early medieval era, these five kinds of plays popular liturgical plays, question and answer, educating people about it, and particularly in a Christian way, saint plays, mystery plays, passion plays, and morality plays. The center of these plays were church. Okay, this is how the medieval drama staged. Okay, thank you so very much. If you have further questions, you can leave them in the comments. So I would be online and I would be able to respond to your questions as well. Don't forget these masks, the symbol of drama, symbol of theater performance. Thank you, sorry, thank you so much. This is your teacher, Mohammed Aslan Siddiqui, teaching classical drama till Renaissance. Bye for now.